Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of A Gardener's Journey Homestead. I'm in the tunnel today and we're also going to be in the outside garden. Today we're talking about next level gardening, okay? Next level, next level gardening. I'm talking about today, I'm going to take you with me as I, excuse me, as I prepare to get my samples for soil testing. And I say next level because when I was a first year gardener, second year gardener, your girl wasn't testing soil. But now it's something that I do every single year. And as always, I want to push you <laughs> to do the same. Y'all know I push in love, right? Because this channel is all about a gardener's journey. Now, one thing about journey means that you're moving, right? A journey is not sedentary. A journey is not still. A journey is I am getting better. I'm moving. I'm keeping pace like one foot in front of another. That is what you think about when you think about a journey. That's what this channel is all about. As I learn, I'm sharing. As I'm making mistakes, I'm sharing. I'm showing you my journey and in hopes that it will inspire you to have your own gardening journey with successes, failures, and all that. So if you're brand new here, you picked a great video. Well, Every video is a great video to uh, pop on in this channel and just land here for a minute. So go ahead and subscribe now in faith, in faith, okay? I'm so excited um, because I love talking about gardening and all things gardening. I get excited. I get hyped because first of all, who wants to listen to somebody boring on YouTube? Like I got plenty of other stuff to do. So if I'm going to get some information, I want to get it from somebody who knows what they're talking about, at least pretending <laughs> like they're excited about it so that I can get excited as well. And gardening is not for the faint of heart. Y'all, this is my hobby. This is not my full-time job. So I'm going to be hyped because if I didn't love it, I wouldn't be on this YouTube channel. But if you're new here, I'm in zone 7B. I live in the state of Tennessee and on our homestead, we garden in three main places. We have four raised beds. No, excuse me, five raised beds behind our house. We have a high tunnel, which I'm in right now, that has six raised beds in it, as well as an in-ground space. We have five rows that are 45 feet long. And then we also have an in-ground garden space that is um, 100 foot in length. And it's about 4,000 square feet. It's 20 by no, 40 by 100. Yeah, 4,000 square feet. So we grown in a lot of spaces, okay? So the thing that I'm doing different this year is that I'm actually testing my soil in all three places. So what I've traditionally done is I've only tested my soil in the in-ground space, right? That's the only place that I've done because that's the biggest space and that's just what I've done. But this year, I'm going to do the in-ground space. I'm going to do my raised beds in the tunnel, and I'm also going to do the in-ground in the tunnel. Now, let me show you the, the kit that I am using. It is my soil test kit. Um, you said I got my labels on there. Because I'm doing three, I had to um, label which box was which so that I don't get it all screwed up. But this is my soil test. If you're interested, go to the link in my bio, go to my Amazon shop, and that is in there. The first year that I did soil testing, I used my local co-op extension office i went they gave me a little cup to get my soil samples in i mailed it off and then i got a report i don't know in two or three weeks um online i could access it this is a lot quicker and i like this better so i just do this now you can go to your local co-op you can go to whatever place you want to go to this to me is just easier it's a kit. All you have to do is register the kit online, mysoiltesting.com. I've already done that for today. Um, and I have three different kits because I'm doing three different spaces. Uh, one of the things, and in terms of the, the cost, I think this is like $25 to $30. So not a lot. Now, again, I'm doing three spaces. So that would be $75. But what I did is that I bought two of these last year like off season, like right after the summer, like at the beginning of the fall, they had a special, I want to say like buy one, get 50% off. And I bought two then. Um, and then I just bought another one, um, a couple of weeks ago when they had another, they sent me a, a coupon for another special or something like that. And one of the things that I try to do again, because I'm always watching my coins is <laughs> it may not look like it, but I am. I, I know where every dollar is going. <laughs> One of the things I do is I try to buy some stuff off season. So for example, I knew when I bought these in the fall, I wasn't going to do them until now, but because they had a sale and a lot of money wasn't going out because it was the end of the season, then I went ahead and bought two, just stashed them away. And now I only had to pay $20 
for this one and I had already paid for these like six months ago. So it all worked out to my good. But basically you go um, online and you register. It's gonna, um, there is a registration number that comes on your little thing right here. They give you the envelope to mail it in, postage already paid. And then you get a scoop like that to collect your samples. And then you get this here. You're gonna go around and get like five or six places of the soil that you wanna test. Go about six inches um, in the ground. If you can, if it's hard, then just get the top layer. But get it in like five or six different places and then you're just gonna mix it in with this right here. Put it in this envelope and drop it in the mailbox. It's just that simple. And what I like about it is that you go get the results online and they're usually there, I would say within five to six days. Right, so they ask you that when you go and do your soil samples, go ahead and mail it within 24 hours because you don't want the soil to sit. So I'm gonna do this today. Go ahead and put it in the mailbox. They'll pick it up tomorrow, it'll be off. And then um, I should have my results by the end of next week. I'll go online and it's right there. And I love their reporting versus the other one that I got from the extension office through the, I don't know, state of Tennessee or something like that. I love the way that they report and they also give you suggestions on whatever it is you're missing in your soil and how to remedy it. Um, so let me talk about the importance of a soil test because if you've never done one, I really wanna encourage you to do one. So basically, when we talk about amending the soil, amend, that means to change, right? Because, and again, I'm, I'm not trying to insult you, I'm just breaking it down because I never knew what that meant when people kept saying, I'm going to amend my soul. I'm going to amend my soul. I'm like, you're going to do what to your soul? So on this channel, I'm always trying to be as beginner and clear as possible because for me, I couldn't understand what they were talking about until I found somebody who broke it down. So when you're thinking about planting in your soul, remember your soul has three main nutrients, NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So when you're looking at... Uh, let's see. I don't have a thing here. But anyway, when you go buy a bag of like soil and stuff in the store, there's usually three numbers. Three dash three dash four or something like that. Those numbers are NPK. The first number is nitrogen. The first, um, the second number is phosphorus. And the third number is potassium, right? Those are the three major, um, what we call macronutrients um, that you need or that you find in your soil. So when you get a soil test, it's going to tell you if you are deficient or in excess of nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. Each of those nutrients plays a part into the growth of your plants and they're all necessary. So nitrogen, like tomatoes love nitrogen, corn loves nitrogen. So if you're trying to plant corn and your soil is depleted of nitrogen, then it's not going to grow as well. And you may be thinking, it's something wrong with the seed. It's something wrong with the corn. It's something wrong with my ground. But you don't know what's wrong, so you can't fix it, right? Versus when you do a soil test and it comes back and it says, you are deficient in nitrogen, then you know you need to amend your soil and give it more nitrogen, right? Hopefully that makes sense. So when they talk about amending soil, you can't amend what you don't know. Well, let me back up. You can amend your soil, but if you don't know what your soil is deficient in or what it has excess of, then you are amending and putting stuff in your soul, basically in the dark. It's like walking into your garden blind. You're like, I don't know what it needs, but I'm gonna pour a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. You know? Okay, can you do that? You can. But we, if we want abundance and optimal gardens, then you wanna give it what it needs. It's like if somebody has anemia, they need iron, right? So if you're trying to give somebody who's anemic calcium and like calcium is good for you. What? I gave you calcium. Why are you not responding to the calcium? They're gonna be like, cause I don't need calcium. I need iron, <laughs> right? So instead of me drinking milk, I need to get me some beets or some figs or things that are high in um, iron. It's the same thing with your soul. To me, I call it next level because again, we can all put stuff in a pot, we can all put stuff in the ground, but if you wanna have abundance and you wanna have optimal growth, the first thing is to know what is in your soul. What is it lacking? What does it have excess of? Maybe you have too much nitrogen, then you don't wanna go start adding a whole bunch of nitrogen, right? It'll burn your plants. 
So that is the reason why a soil test is important. The other thing that is going to measure is the micro nutrients. What are micronutrients? So macro, big, micro, small. So when you think about micronutrients, we're talking about boron, manganese, sulfur, zinc, all those things that are not as in abundance of the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, but they're also necessary for optimal growth. And many times we don't talk about those micronutrients or we don't care about them, but bumping up a micronutrient that you're deficient in can change the game in your harvest, in your abundance, in your produce, right? And so it's important to know what micronutrients are also missing, okay? So that's my little blurb on a soil test. Again, if you got $30, I want you to go click the link in my bio and go get you one of these. This is the perfect time to do it. Before, again, I always do mine before the summer season, before I'm switching over and into my summer crops because that's the biggest season. Last year, I did my soil test after I had already tilled my ground and amended my soil. Um, and so that was backwards, right? I was still able to add some stuff but this time, I want to make sure I know ahead of time. So before I put plants in the ground, before I add anything, I know exactly what it needs. Okay? So I want to encourage you, if you've never done one before, that's why I call it next level. Take one more step in your journey and figure out what your soul is lacking and what it needs. Okay? If you have questions, put them down below. So the very first one we're going to do is the raised beds. Now... I want to do the raised beds because, again, all the raised beds out here, we brought the soil in, right? It's not soil native to the ground. We brought it in and pretty much, you know, we've amended it, you know, over time, amended it with compost, alfalfa meal, just general things, worm castings, things that are not going to hurt your plants. It's going to help it. But again, it still may not be getting what it needs. And so I'm curious uh, to see. This is really like an experiment because I'm curious to see, okay, what could it, you know, possibly need and what the findings are. So we're going to go around. We got our raised bed box to make sure we have the right one. And we have our little scoop. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take one of these little things. We're going to go around, get some dirt and five or six different places. I'm just going to get a little bit from each bed since I have six beds and mix it up in here and then we'll get that soil sample ready to send off. Okay, so this is our soil sample. I got it a little bit from each bed. Obviously, we're not going to send that much, but we're just going to mix it up. Make sure it's all kind of incorporated. Get rid of any like large pieces or debris, right? And then we're going to take one scoop and mix it in one scoop like that. And then we're going to mix it in this right here. So it tells you do not remove contents, just add soil. So we're going to take that off. You can see there's a little thing in there. If you can see that we're going to add that in there and put the top back on just like that and then it's gonna go in this package here it's already self-addressed there's no post is necessary I'm gonna make sure this is on good and then we're gonna put that in here and then seal it and it's ready for the post office so now I'm just gonna do the same thing um in the rows in the um in ground tunnel and then i'm gonna go out to the garden and do the exact same thing and we'll have our three samples ready to go okay y'all done just like that so i have three ready to go to the post office so 
within a week i'll have results then we'll know exactly what each um, area needs and i'll be sure to share my results with you now i have one more little project that i want to get done while i'm out here um before it gets dark i need to remember to go to the mailbox as soon as i leave here um because y'all know so how that goes so these are seedlings that we started a couple weeks ago in these little mini blocks i'm just going to up pot these just because half of this tray is empty i can put them in some soil blocks and then add them to a tray that's in the house so i'm just really consolidating and up potting but i thought i'd get it done while i was out here so i'm really trying to stay as much as possible ahead of um the things that need to be up potted and consolidating and all of that as much as I possibly can so that it's not overwhelming so to speak so I'll do this little tray and that'll be you know one more notch done without me having to do a hundred at one time because I know when it comes to the tomatoes and peppers that is going to be um, a feat so what you see me planting up now is some black beauty eggplant that finally germinated so i'm just up potting these little what you might call it six cell trays because i didn't feel like making soil blocks that's why it's nice to have various different methods and of course these will need to be up potted again but this will at least give me some time and space for sure so we'll put the little thing right there for the eggplant and then the next two I have two orange cayennes that I'm gonna do those are the only two that germinated and again this is why I like starting a lot of stuff in these mini blocks because initially it doesn't take up a lot of space and in case something doesn't um, germinate then I don't have to worry about it taking up space I can just you know up pot only the two that germinated versus having to up pot or excuse me not up pot but having it taking up a whole tray of space and only two germinated and when I know I'm gonna up pot I purposely keep these things dry and not wet them because it's much easier to up pot them while they're dry then and then water them in instead of trying to do it when they're wet because they will fall apart. Okay, y'all, we got that project done. So, um, I got 22 plants, so I got two spaces that's empty. Um, we have, um, let's see, 10 golden cow wonder peppers that's a new pepper that i haven't done before we have four black beauty eggplant two cayenne orange and then six giant marconi um out of those little soil blocks so i have a tray in the house that um has half a tray of space so i'm going to take these four and make a whole tray in there and then i'm down one less tray that just means I got more space right this whole season is about consolidation space and being mindful and intentional and all that so i got these watered in these are going to go in the house got the soil test done so i'm feeling real accomplished today real accomplished thank you guys for hanging out with me today um, i hope that i encourage you to do a soil test if you um have questions let me know put them down below and then remember if you're having a space issue remember to keep consolidating and up potting and doing all the things that you need to do try to do a little bit you know each time you know again y'all know i'm the queen of i ain't got but 20 minutes and i will get something done um, because my life is busy as i'm sure yours is and so every little bit counts and it'll help me from feeling overwhelmed so right now i'm staying on top of it and I pray that is my story <laughs> the whole gardening season. But I hope that your gardens are doing well. Remember, if you have not subscribed to the channel, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel. Okay, somebody was calling me. Sorry. I would love for you to subscribe to the channel and be a part of this community. This is a great community. We help each other. Great comments. Everybody is willing to help. And that is the way I like it. That's the way I'm going to keep it. And that's the way I want it. So if you want to be part of a community where you can learn, grow, ask your questions, and it's a safe space, then I encourage you to subscribe. Share this video with a friend or with a neighbor. Remember, gardening is a journey. That means we're not standing still. We're moving. Let's grow together. I'll see you next time, friend.